Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. on NASA's first planetary defense test to intentionally crash into an asteroid. Almost one year ago, NASA's DART was launched. The goal of the mission was to test a new method of planetary defense by crashing the DART spacecraft into a near-Earth object, or NEO, named Dimorphos. If successful, the kinetic impact would slow Dimorphos a tiny amount and permanently alter its orbit why is that a big deal? Well, over time, even small changes to an object's orbit can have big long-term effects. Dimorphos itself poses no direct threat to us, but theoretically, if we were to identify a dangerous object many years before it reached Earth, we could deflect it far enough in advance that it would miss us entirely. In theory, such a technology could save the Earth from a cataclysmic event like Chicxulub, the asteroid that likely killed off the non-avian dinosaurs 65 million years ago. So far, we've identified about 30,000 asteroids larger than 140 meters in our planetary neighborhood, none of which have a chance of hitting us anytime soon. And scientists think they found all the ones larger than 10 kilometers, but with an estimated 60% of NEOs greater than 140 meters still unknown, scientists take the threat seriously which is why the DART mission is so significant. Now, the wait is finally over. On the 26th of September 2022, 10 months after its launch, DART completed its mission when it crashed into Dimorphos. In the days and weeks since, images and data have come pouring in, and NASA has already released its early findings. So, was DART a success? And how, for that matter, has NASA defined success? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Join me today as we learn about the latest findings of the DART mission and look at the stunning final images the spacecraft took before its final crash into Dimorphos. Let's start with a quick recap. DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. It's a joint project between NASA and John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory with international partners in Italy, Japan, and the European Space Agency. The double asteroid in DART refers to the fact that Dimorphos is a part of a binary system. It's actually a 160-meter moonlet, which orbits the much larger 780-meter asteroid Didymus. Dimorphos has an orbital period of 11.9 hours and maintains a distance of about one kilometer from Didymus. The system orbits the Sun every 2.1 Earth years and made its approach to Earth in October 2022, coming within 10.6 million kilometers, the closest it's been since 2003, meaning this was the perfect time to visit it. Compared to other spacecraft, DART doesn't have a lot of frills. It's about the size of a refrigerator and weighs just 610 kilograms which is minuscule compared to Dimorphos's estimated weight of 5 billion kilograms. DART has one payload, an aperture camera called DRACO, short for Didymus Reconnaissance and Asteroid Camera for Optical Navigation, as well as sensors and an autonomous navigation system. It also comes paired with a small secondary spacecraft called Lichia Cube, making it a binary spacecraft visiting a binary system. Built by the Italian space agency ASI, Lichia Cube is a small CubeSat with its own autonomous navigation system designed to separate from DART 15 days before impact. Lichia Cube is tasked with recording the impact and its aftermath with two optical cameras named Luke and Leia. Yes, you heard that correctly, Star Wars fans. After blasting off on the 23rd of November 2021 on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, DART spent the next 10 months in transit. In the four hours leading up to the impact, at a distance of 90,000 kilometers, DART's internal navigation system took over, and 90 minutes before impact, its smart nav system put the spacecraft on its final trajectory. When DART was 24,000 kilometers away, Dimorphos became visible on camera, taking up 1.4 pixels. 
This is one of Draco's last images, where you can see both Dimorphos and its parent asteroid in the same frame. As Dart hurtled closer to its target at a speed of 22,000 km per hour, Dimorphos and its potential impact site came into spectacular view. In this image, taken just 3 seconds before impact, you can really see how Dimorphos is a loose pile of rubble, essentially left over from the solar system's birth. This remarkable photograph is Dart's final fully transmitted image. It was taken at a distance of 12 kilometers, a mere 2 seconds before impact. For reference, the scale is roughly 3 centimeters per pixel. And here, finally, is Dart's last partially transmitted image. The downlink was interrupted by Dart's previously scheduled, shall we say, disassembly. As strange as it sounds, this is my favorite of these images. Its incompleteness seems to capture the drama and intensity of the moment, as though freezing for all time the breathtaking instant when Dart completed its 17.5 million kilometer journey in the blink of an eye. To the very end, Dart did what it was designed to do with incredible precision, and it's a testament to the ingenuity of those at NASA. Here is the entire sequence sped up and played as a time lapse. The video you see corresponds to the final 5.5 minutes of Dart's final trajectory. As you'll notice, some of the images look a bit blurred. That's because Dart's ion thrusters came into play, causing vibrations to the spacecraft and its camera. This sequence is incredible to me due to the speed involved. It hits such a tiny object and I'm astonished some of these images are in focus at all. Imagine how quickly the camera had to adjust to the rapidly approaching object. Now, I'm sure you're itching to know whether the impact was successful. To relieve you of the suspense, the answer is yes. In fact, the early results have surpassed expectations. Before Dart's kinetic impact, NASA defined success as a change in Dimorphos' orbital period of at least 73 seconds. Yet, based on what we know so far, the data shows that Dart shortened Dimorphos' orbit by a full 32 minutes, from 11 hours and 55 minutes to 11 hours and 23 minutes. Even with a margin of error of plus or minus 2 minutes, that is 25 times NASA's benchmark, a truly remarkable outcome. The impact released 19 gigajoules of energy, the equivalent of 5 tons of TNT, and blasted a crater up to 150 meters wide in the asteroid's surface. Pretty big considering the moon was only 160 meters to begin with. But why did the impact shorten Dimorphos' orbit? Well, due to orbital mechanics, the crash pushed Dimorphos closer to Didymus, which in turn sped up its orbit. Scientists confirm this finding through observations from optical telescopes here on Earth, including the Southern Astrophysical Research Telescope in Chile. SOAR also happened to capture some of the very best images of the encounter, including this breathtaking photograph of a 10,000 km trail of debris two days after the impact, making it look like a comet. Because Didymos is a two-asteroid system, its brightness fluctuates as Dimorphos passes through the shadow of its parent asteroid and out again in front. By tracking the light curve, scientists can calculate the speed of Dimorphos' orbit. These results were further supported by radar data collected by observatories in California and West Virginia. Dart wasn't the only camera watch in the event though. The closest images of the crash scene were captured by Lichia Cube, and they are phenomenal. As you might recall, Lichia Cube separated from Dart two weeks before impact to conduct its own flyby using autonomous navigation systems. Two minutes and 45 seconds after Dart's impact, Lichia Cube flew past Dimorphos to photograph the impact site with its evolving plumes and ejector. Here is an action packed image of Dimorphos after the event, with Didymus overexposed in the foreground. Notice the huge plumes of material emanating from Dimorphos. Some of them seem to be spiraling, almost like tendrils of a vine. This indicates that the material changed directions as the plume grew. We think this phenomenon may be caused by the composition of the asteroid, 
as impact tests on finer sediment mixed with coarser debris sometimes yield similar ejection patterns. This is a more distant image, also captured by Lucia Cube, with Dimorphos on the rightmost side. Notice how the asteroid itself is barely visible due to the huge clouds of material splashed up by the impact. But Lychia Cube and Earth-based telescopes weren't the only tools observing the impact's aftermath. Hubble and the Webb Telescope also got in on the action. Here you can see a spectacular series of images from Hubble showing the progression of the plumes in size and number. Notice how some of the plumes look like rays emanating from the asteroid. Strangely, some of these rays appear curved. Why? As of now, NASA isn't sure. While Hubble has observed the impact from the visible spectrum of light, the Webb Telescope captured its own images from the infrared spectrum. This is pretty impressive, since Dimorphos was traveling three times faster than Webb was meant to be able to track. The time lapse you are looking at starts right before impact and continues until five hours afterwards. Notice the sudden flare of light coinciding with the material released from impact. I also love how the web images give you a great sense of the spiraling plumes emanating from the asteroid. Over the coming weeks and months, scientists will continue to study the data from DART's impact. But the real investigative work will be carried out in the future by HERA. HERA is a mission currently being developed by the European Space Agency that will launch in October 2024. Carrying a sophisticated payload of instruments including cameras, a spectrometer, and an altimeter, HERA will intricately document the size, shape, and composition of the crater left behind by DART's impact. It will also carry two nanosatellites named Milani and Juventus. Most exciting of all, HERA will conduct observations of Dimorphos' internal and subsurface structures. This model will not only advance our understanding of the binary Didymus system itself, but provide a more nuanced understanding of how NEO's physical characteristics influence the transfer of momentum, as well as how kinetic energy transfers to an NEO and ejected materials. All of this will allow for a greater understanding of DART's kinetic impact, and provide a useful guideline for improving deflection technologies in the future. So, there we have it. Everything you could want to know about the DART mission. Right now we've barely scratched the surface of deflection technologies, but if you look at what this mission has accomplished, it appears the future of planetary defense has taken a bold and promising first step. So, do you think this mission was worthwhile? Do you think we'll have to use this technology within our lifetimes? Let me know in the comments. When DART reached Dimorphos, it was going 6.6 .6 kilometers a second. While we can't reach those kind of speeds here on Earth, acceleration in a fast car is still very exciting. That being the case, would you ever want to climb into the driver's seat of the fastest production sedan ever made and effortlessly zoom from 0 to 100 km per hour in 1.99 seconds? With Amaze, maybe you can. Amaze is offering you the chance to win a custom Tesla Model S Apex. This car is top of the line with prestigious interior finishing and a carbon fiber wide body kit. It looks so good, and you won't find another car like it, because this custom $250,000 car is actually a one of a kind. The thing I like about Amaze is that by entering, you can also help support a charity. And for this sweepstake, it's the Peterson Automotive Museum, a nonprofit that explores and presents the history of the automobile and its impact on global life and culture. So head to amaze.com forward slash astrum and enter now. The experience closes on the 27th of January at 11.59pm Pacific Standard Time. You don't want to miss this. Did you know DART isn't the first time we crashed a probe into an object to see what would happen? Check out the Deep Impact video for more info. A big thanks to my patrons and members for supporting the channel. If you want your name added to this list too, check the links in the description. All the best and see you next time.